Hey everybody, welcome back to the VMP Performance Channel. I'm Justin, and I wanna talk with you about a very important part of installing a supercharger kit on your 11 to 14 Mustang or F-150. When you install a supercharger, it's very critical that the computer knows the intake air temperature sensor after the blower and charge air cooler or intercooler. This allows the computer to adjust timing and most importantly, retard timing if air temp gets too high. Air temp can get too high because you've been driving very, very aggressively, you don't have a large enough cooling system for the boost you're running, or because your intercooler pump failed, or you ran out of water due to a leak. So this is a very important safeguard that's built into the system. When you install the VMP supercharger on your F-150 or Mustang, and now this applies to top mount Gen 3R style superchargers and blow up Odin style superchargers, you need to add a harness for a second air intake temperature sensor, commonly referred to as IAT2. Let's get started working on the car. We're gonna go ahead and lift the cover off and that is gonna give us access to our ECU connector. We're gonna get started on the ACT wiring. You're gonna to need to disconnect all the PCM connectors to get to the bottom C connector. And on that connector, we are going to tap into one wire and we're going to add a pin so the computer can register the temperature of the air going into the engine. This is something that is unique to 11 to 14 Coyotes. You're gonna go ahead and take off the wire support and take off any tape that holds it on. We're gonna go ahead and identify pin 56 first. We'll also throw a diagram up on the screen for you. Now that we have identified pin 56, we wanna go ahead and take off the connector retainer, the white piece on the front side of the connector. And you're gonna to wanna to use a pick or a connector tool to release the detent that is holding the pin into the connector. Go ahead and slide that pin out you're going to want to identify a portion of the wire far enough back from the connector that you can reinsert it when you need to. Then you're going to strip some of the insulation off of the wire. This is where we're going to use the VMP supplied harness and tap into this wire. This is gonna provide a reference for the air temperature sensor that we're adding. There's a couple different ways to do this. However you do it, you wanna make sure that you strip back the insulation carefully. You are then going to take the VMP supplied harness, the bare end wire, and wrap it around. And then you can either use the supplied crimp or you can solder it. We also supply a small piece of heat shrink tubing so you can seal everything up once you're done. Once again, make sure you install that heat shrink tubing far enough back from the pin that you can still get it back into the connector. Now that we've finished up modification to this wire and we have tapped in with the VMP harness. We're gonna go ahead and insert it back into pin 56 in the PCM connector. We're gonna go ahead and go to the front side of the connector and identify pin 36. This is where we're going to be adding a pin from the VMP harness. There is a blank currently in that hole. You'll need to use your connector tool or pick to push it out. Make sure it's clear from the connector body and then carefully you'll want to reinsert the new pin, making sure that the orientation is correct for the lock. If you have it on the right side, it will go in and it will not pull back out. If you don't, it'll wanna pull right back out. So just make sure you check the pin and make sure it's locked in before you finish. 
Once that's done, you can go ahead and put the wire support back on, go ahead and reconnect the connector to the PCM, and this part of the job is done. I also want to tell you, after you do get this hooked up, you install your blower, you load your tune, you're going to want a data log. IAT, ACT are going to show you the air temp as measured by the mass air sensor at the air filter. That air filter is in the engine bay and when you're not moving or you're moving at very slow speeds, it's going to suck in a lot of hot air. So unless you're going down the highway at 60 miles an hour, don't really worry about the IAT. Just know it's there. IAT2 is going to some extent trace IAT1 because if you're just sitting there, your car's idling on a 90 degree day, it's just baking in its own heat, there's all this heat coming off the headers that's getting sucked into the air filter, there's only so much that the cooling system in our supercharger kit can do. However, once you get going, you're starting to bring in some fresh air. And then once you go wide open throttle, you're bringing in a whole lot of fresh air, you're compressing air, you're forcing it into the engine, that is where your intercooler system really has to work and function well and where your IET2 temperatures are going to be really relevant to the performance of your vehicle. People always freak out and say my IET is 180 degrees. Well, if you're at idle, heck, if you shut the car off and then key back on without starting the engine just to data lock, you can get these sky high IET readings on both one and two. But what matters is when you're wide open throttle, you're going to see your IAT1 drop down as it gets fresh air. You're going to see your IAT2 drop initially and then slowly climb. That peak IAT2 temperature, while you're still wide open throttle, is the most important and the best indicator of how your vehicle's performing, whether it's getting timing retard or not. Certain systems like the Odin, which has twin intercoolers in the lid, are really, really good at cooling the air and it's got two intercooler bricks. Heck, it just has a lot of aluminum to act as a heat sink. You get into a Gen 3R blowdown system, it only has one intercooler brick. That system is always going to benefit from more water flow at higher boost levels to carry away the heat. It's not as forgiving as, say, the Odin system. I hope everybody learned how important it is to properly pin in your IAT2 sensor on your 11 to 14 supercharger installation. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you next time.